so we are going to look at the stresses that are acting at the various fibers of uh, the composite section. We have uh, stresses due to press stressing forces, uh, gamma 1, and uh, we have it at fiber 1, uh, we have it at fiber number 2. Uh, we have uh, stress at fiber 1 due to press stressing force as our PA, P ratio A plus uh, PES over sectional modulus 1. Uh, similarly, we have a similar situation for fiber, uh, fiber number uh, 2. We have a similar situation for fiber number uh, 2. Sorry, we just corrected that. So at fiber number two, we have uh, the stresses at fiber two. We have stress due to press stressing force. And uh, we have um, uh, the same fiber number two. We have stress due to bending uh, derived from self-weight of uh, the precast section MDA. That is the bending moment due to uh, self-weight of the precast section. So we have gamma two with respect to load combination one. Of course, like we said, load combination one is when the self-weight of uh, the beam is uh, acting. Uh, the bending moment MDA is bending moment due to self-weight. Remember we said we have three load conditions, but we're going to concentrate on basically two load conditions, which is load combination one, uh, which has to do with uh, self-weight and load combination two, which is a combination of uh, uh, the institute slab plus uh, the precast section plus uh, moment due to uh, imposed life load. So this gives us load combination three. So uh, the subscript one represent the load combination in the bracket. So where we have this subscript, like we have here, this is one representing load combination one. These represent the fibers. So when we do that, we'll say, okay, that um, the bending stress due to load combination three, which is a combination of both life load, dead load. And I'll remember that at fiber number three, if we go back to the diagram, you will see that at fiber number three, we do not have the, the institute slab is just below it. So, I mean, the precast section is below it. So we are not going to uh, consider that. Uh, so, so the, the, the bending stress at fiber number three is only going to consider the bending due to impose the life load. So the sectional modulus will be sectional modulus with respect to fiber three of the entire composite uh, section. Similarly, we'll do the same. But remember that for fiber number three and fiber number four, uh, because of uh, the presence of uh, uh, the composite uh, section, which is the institute slab and the precast section, we are going to modify the section using modular ratio. Uh, we know that our modular ratio M is uh, 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 that of uh, modulus of elasticity of concrete, uh, mod ratio modulus of elasticity of the institute concrete, ratio the modulus of elasticity of the precast concrete. So that figure. Uh, our M will be multiplied by uh, by this figure, all right? So to modify this section, okay? So take note of that when we want to carry out the design. Now we have all the stresses at fiber number. Let's look at the fiber stresses now at fiber one. We have the total stress as this, stress due to fiber number one for precast section, and stress due to at fiber number one due to load combination three. If we add it up, we'll have this expression. Also, at fiber number one, we have stress due to precast section, uh, stress due to press stress plus stress due to load combination uh, one at fiber number one. So we'll have a total of this uh, expression for the stresses. Now, at fiber two, similarly, we have at fiber two, uh, stress due to press stressing force plus stress due to uh, load combination three, which is this. So we have the expression of this. And also the last we have uh, at fiber number two, stress due to uh, prestressive force plus stress due to uh, load combination one, which is an MDA. So we have the stresses as this. 
Now, having gotten the stress, the next we are going to do, we needed to establish the necessary inequality for the cable zone equations. Now, to do that, uh, we have to first of all know that numerically, the bending moment due to precast section uh, numerically is likely to be lesser than the bending moment due to uh, imposed life load. So, numerically, this MDA is expected to be greater than ML. All right. So, uh, that is one condition. A second condition is that our MDA is lesser than uh, a combination of uh, a combination of the whole of load combination. All right. So, for load combination one, which comprises of only our precast section moment, which is MDA. We're going to find that uh, through the two conditions, when MDA is greater, MDA, which represents our load combination one, is greater than our load combination three, which comprises of this, this, and this. All right, that is condition three. Okay, then the next condition we'll look at is when these three, MDA, MDB, and ML, is uh, greater than our uh, MDA. So the first condition, when this is lesser than our MDA, this, 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 which is combination, comprised of combination three, is lesser than our MDA. And when this, 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 is greater than our MDA. So we'll look at that and establish the inequalities, okay? Now let's go over and look at the basic inequality. All right, so when we look at the stresses, now numerically we have, uh, negative stress here if we have here to be negative stress it means that uh, mda is greater than negative uh, our negative uh, mda plus mdb plus ml which is load combination three so we know that numerically if you have a minus three minus three is greater than minus nine though numerically nine seems to be greater so this is what we are going to do in the first case now if we have this what it means is that uh, the stress at fiber number one due to uh, load combination one is greater than the stress at the same fiber number one due to load combination three. All right. Now, similarly, the same thing happens in 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 writing the stress. If we write the stress, the total stress at fiber one will be this. Uh, remember that this one is greater than uh, the stress at fiber one due to three. So all the stress at fiber one we have this becomes the highest stress because this is greater than this so that's why i would say uh, the summation of this is lesser or equal to the maximum fiber allowable fiber stress now similarly the same this becomes the lower stress limit and if we add it up it will be greater than the minimum allowable fiber stress so if this is what we have now let's look at the second case and the second case is going to be a case where we have positive value for our load combination three. If we have positive value for our load combination three, MDA plus MDB plus ML, it will be greater than the load combination one. So what it means is that at fiber two, uh, the load combination three stress at fiber two will be greater than uh, load combination one stress at the same fiber two. So what it means is that load combination two stress, which will now be the upper limit of stress. Uh, remember that our stress due to pre-stress will remain constant. So uh, we we'll do that. Uh, this becomes the upper limit of stress. That is what we say. Uh, stress at fiber two due to pre-stress in force, but stress at fiber two due to combination three is lesser than the maximum liable fiber stress. Okay. Similarly, we do the same for this. This becomes the minimum allowable fiber stress so we've been able to establish the inequalities similarly at fiber three fiber three we have maximum stress at fiber three and that stress will be stressed due to life load and the same also we have the minimum stress at fiber four that is we're talking about the institute section and the precard and the the top fiber of the institute section and the bottom fiber of the institute section they represent uh, uh, fiber three and fiber four uh, respectively okay now let's look at the stresses at transfer the stresses are transfer now we we'll know that at transfer uh the section which is the precast section 
is going to be analyzed, it's going to be constructed in the factory. And then um, uh, what we are talking about is the safe weight. So during construction, you only have the safe weight, which is which we represent by our load combination one. So at transfer, we are going to be dealing with load combination one, both at fiber one and at fiber two. So let's start with fiber one. The total stress at fiber one, uh, let's look at the maximum stress. Of course, the maximum stress will be located at uh, fiber number one. Uh, that is where we have the maximum stress, and that is due to load combination one. So why the minimum stress will be located at fiber two, uh, where we have a minimum stress. So this results to the equation, the inequality. So let's call it equation one. Now at working load or during the service life of the structure, uh, we are going to be dealing with all the load combination, which is load combination one, two, three. So we are dealing with three load combinations. Now we'll look at the various fiber in this case again of the precast section. Let's start with fiber number one. The total stresses are fiber number one. Uh, remember, we been, we've gotten these stresses. So all we need to do, we look at it here. At fiber number one due to combination three, fiber number one, uh, due to combination three, this is what we have here. So this becomes our minimum value for stress. So at uh, fiber number one, why also at fiber number two, load combination three, uh, this gives us uh, the, the minimum fiber number two. Let's look at fiber number two. This fiber, okay, this fiber number two, uh, we have maximum stress here. And at fiber number two, Working at working load, we are going to have fiber one and fiber two. So let's pick it out. We have uh, fiber one at working load. And fiber one at working load, this is the stress. We have the stress. Fiber one at working load, this is the stress. Now at fiber two on working load, working load at fiber two, this is what we have, and this is the stress. So we we'll write it here. So we we'll have uh, this, we we'll have this. I'll have this, okay? So now this gives us the four equations of uh, stresses that we're going to deal with. So now from this equation, we're going to determine the cable zone equations by obtaining the cable eccentricity uh, for each of them. And as well, we're going to determine the upper and lower stress, uh, lower limit of pre-stressing force, all right? All right so let's look at uh, the equations for the cable eccentricity. We are going to have equation one. We have from equation one. Uh, from equation one, we looked at uh, the expression for equation one. I uh, will have the expression as this. Now, collecting like terms to obtain our cable eccentricity ES, uh, we're going to have ES uh, divided both sides by this. We have the inequality sign changing to this direction. Uh, solving for ES, we are going to obtain ES in this format. So we have our ES to be Z1 over A minus F maximum Z1 over P plus MDA over P, all right? So this is a first equation for cable eccentricity. Let's call it equation 1C. Now from equation 2, we are going to have a similar thing where we have the total stresses to be greater than the F minimum, which is the minimum fiber stress. Now uh, take note that the minimum fiber stress uh, is negative. Take note that this minimum allowable fiber stress is in, it has a negative values. All right. So if it has a negative value, so this is greater than this. So if we solve this out, we are going to have uh, the cable eccentricity EX for equation two. We'll have it to be this. All right. So let's call this equation two C. Similarly, from equation three, we do the same. So I'm going to have this expression for equation three, ES, uh, we'll have it on the board. All right, so from equation number three, uh, solving equation three, you can see uh, PA over MDA, ML, we have uh, uh, collecting like terms and uh, taking the expression for ES, we're going to have our ES to be Z1 minus Z1 over A plus F minimum over P, Z1, Plus this. So simplifying the whole of this expression, we're going to have that equation 3C uh, as the three, we're going to have it finally to be this as um, 
our keyboard eccentricity for equation three. Let's call that uh, equation three. Eccentricity obtained, ES is less than the whole of this expression. And let's call it uh, equation three C. Now the last of the equation is equation four and the solving for ES for equation four, we have it as this P over this, uh, less than the maximum fiber stresses. So if we work it out, dividing both sides by P over Z2, we're going to have the expression as this. And uh, we'll have our ES, which is our cable eccentricity, to be less than this expression. So if we do that, let's call this expression, let's call it uh, equation 4C. All right. So we've gotten the four equations for the cable zone. Um, now, having gotten this equation, we should note that uh, we needed to obtain uh, the the cable zone, but uh, the operative cable zone will be gotten uh, from uh, our graph. All right, so we're going to have a graph of ML versus uh, a graph of ML versus uh, our P. Okay, so for us to have that graph of ML uh, versus our P, we have to compare the equations. All right, comparing equation 3C, which comparing equation 3C with equation 1C, this is equation 1C, you can see eccentricity greater, and uh, here we have eccentricity. So if we do that, what it means is that uh, the eccentricity in equation 3 is greater than uh, equation 1. So what we'll do that, we're going to look for our ML expression. All right, so let's work that out and work that out to see. All right, so the expression we're going to have is an expression of ML. All right, so comparing equation 3C versus equation 1C, we're going to have the expression. This is the expression for equation uh, uh, 3C. Uh, this is the expression for equation 3C. So all we need to do is to solve for the equation this is the expression for equation uh, uh, expression for equation 1c and this is the special for equation 3c. So we're going to solve for it to obtain our ML, which is our life load. And once we have the life load, uh, we're going to plot a graph for that. To solve it mathematically, we're going to have this. Start collecting light terms. Eventually, we're going to have that expression as ML is equal to F maximum minus F minimum. Uh, sectional modulus with respect to fiber one of the composite section, and that will call that equation equation uh, 6D. Now, having gotten equation 6D, the next we are going to do is to compare in equation 2C and equation uh, uh, 4C. So, doing that, we say equation 2C, uh, equation 4C is greater than equation 2C. So, solving it mathematically, also, we are going to solve it. You can see the expression. This is the expression for equation 4C. And this is the expression for equation 2C. So we need to obtain our ML, collecting like terms and solving it this way. We are going to have the expression this way, solving it. Uh, so solving it, we are going to have the expression as this. I uh, will have ML. Uh, we are going to have the expression. Let's call that expression ML, F maximum, F minimum. Sectional modulus with respect to fiber 2 for the composite section. We have MDB Z2 prime over Z2. So that's, we call it equation number 7D. Now, the next equation we are going to obtain is by comparing equation 4C versus equation 1C. We are going to obtain that and we are going to have the expression of ML. Remember uh, the expression. Uh, we intend to plot on a graph is going to be equation 4 as uh, uh, z2 f maximum over p minus z2 over p all right minus mda plus mdb over what p i will have a uh, sectional modulus with respect to fiber 2 
uh, for the composite section and uh, sectional modulus with respect to uh, fiber two for the precast section. I will have P. All right, so this is for equation, this is equation four. I will say that equation four is greater than uh, equation one. All right, remember equation one is, equation one is sectional modulus with respect to fiber one, maximum fiber stresses, stress, I uh, will have here P and uh, we we'll have minus MDA over what? Over P. So we're going to solve this expression again and obtain our ML. So once we do that, we've got in the second expression for our graph. All right. So let's clean this off. So once we have this, we intend to obtain our uh, average sub for equation 7D, like we did uh, comparing this with this, uh, where we simplify this expression, uh, we're going to have this as ML uh, less or equal to Z2 prime over Z2, close bracket F maximum, close bracket Z1 plus Z2. So we have the entire expression as this, uh, we can look at it from the other. All right, so when we look at it from the other side of the board, we have this expression finally to be ML less than. Of course, we know that uh, the uh, value of P is negative, meaning the direction of uh, the slope of this uh, graph. Remember, we're going to compare this with the equation of the straight line graph. And uh, the value of our p is going to slope, our p is going to have a negative slope. And uh, the last equation will be gotten by comparing uh, uh, 3c to 2c. So if uh, 3c is greater than 2c, I'm not going to solve that one. So you can work that out by yourself. Uh, we we'll have this as uh, ml less than z1 prime over z1. And uh, we eventually have the entire expression as this. So let's call this equation 9D. So these are the equations we are going to plot on the graph. And uh, from that graph, we can obtain uh, a solution to our pre-stressing forces. Uh, if you look at uh, equation 9D, you discover that uh, the slope of the graph is uh, a positive uh, slope. All right. So when we are drawing the graph, it means it's going to be moving towards our, our, our right-hand side. So let's draw that graph and let's see what we have. Remember equation uh, 6D, so we have uh, equation 6D, we have equation 7D, we have equation 8D, and we have equation 9D. So these four equations, we are going to plot them on a graph and we are going to obtain the solution to the equations and as well as the the domain for the pre-stressing force uh, once this is plotted on um, our graph okay so quickly let's do that uh, let's plot it on uh, the graph so we can have this all right so we can have this graph uh, plotting it on the graph, we can have it as this graph of uh, ML versus P. So here we have our ML, here we have our pre-stressing force. Now let's start with uh, the very first one, equation uh, 6D and equation uh, 7D. Uh, equation 6D is assumed to be, uh, when you compare that equation, you see it's an equation of a straight line on this direction because uh, there is the absence of the variable p. We have uh, the variable we have ml, but the absence of p shows that it's an equation of a straight line. Now uh, we have that graph, so we can call that graph uh, a graph for equation 6d. Uh, less that should be the minimum. Then we can have the second graph, which is a graph of uh, equation 7. D. 
all right so those are the two graphs straight line graph and my my drawings so and the next is uh, a graph for equation 8d we know equation 8d will have the slope to be a negative slope so that equation we're going to have it moving this direction uh, a straight line graph so we can call this uh, this is a positive graph 9d while this one is a negative graph 8d so these are the point of intersection of the graph we we'll have a point of intersection but we're not interested in this domain which is uh, that of 7d then this is uh, this is the domain we're interested in all right so these are the domains so we have the point of intersection which is at this point uh, we have the point of intersection which is at this point all right so those points produce a, a solution to this uh, equation and uh, we can call it p um, we can call it p uh, 10 we can call this solution here we can call it p 11 all right let's just call it uh, that as a solution to the graph so these are the graph we have now um we are going to obtain the solution of this graph which is now remember in this case we are assuming that um, our our cable eccentricity cis d is greater than uh, our cable eccentricity from equation uh, 70 so the assumption you see what we have for equations 70 and 60. These are the unwanted areas. Uh, similarly, we have these ones. So this is the domain. So we have P10 and P11 as a solution to this, equality, this equation. So uh, let's call you our zero mark. So the next thing we, we, we wish to do, uh, we have agreed that uh, equation 6D is greater than uh, equation 7D. But this may not be the case. In It could be that equation 7D becomes greater than 6D. But this graph is a graph where we have equation 6D to be greater than uh, equation uh, 7D. Equation 7D. Uh, we, for equation 6D to be greater than this, we need to obtain the solution to this uh, inequality. All right? We need to obtain the solution to the inequality. So that's we're going to 11. Now we're going to solve for the upper limit of pre-stressing force. That should be at uh, equation 9D and equation 8D. So we'll solve the P for these two. All right, so we want to look at, uh, now from the equation we've just gotten, we have a P10 uh our p10 which are the stationary point of this inequality now we have the whole of this side as our domain equation 9d and equation 8d now from equation 8d we know we can have the upper limit to the pre-stressing force similarly to equation uh, 9d we can have the lower limit to the pre-stressing force and uh, for us to obtain that we need to calculate uh, derive the expression for equation 9d uh, let's call that expression for pre-stressing force P. Uh, let's call that uh, a P9. And that we're going to derive for the upper limit of pre-stressing force. Let's call it uh, uh, from equation 8, they call it uh, P8. Now, this is the expression for P8, remember? So all we need to do is to obtain the value, the expression for P, uh, which represents our PA. All right. Now, in the determination of the upper and lower limit of pre-stressing force, I say from equation 8D, we have, uh, bringing back the AD expression, we are going to have our P8 to be less than negative ML Z2 over Z2 prime plus F maximum Z1 plus Z2 minus MDB uh, times A. I remember this is A. All right. So this is what we have. This is our expression for our P8. And um, we are going to obtain our P9, which will represent 
as this. Picking from a question 90, in question 90, we have the expression for equation 90, and we, uh, we have it as this. So solving for equation 90, we are going to have our P to be greater than this expression. So we can call that equation 9. So what we are saying is that equation 9 and 8 becomes the upper and the lower bound limit of stressing force respectively. And uh, in determination of P10 and P11, uh, we can rewrite the expression uh, as this. Remember that P9 and P10 represent uh, the solution when we have uh, our, our P10 to have this expression. Similarly, our P11 will have this. But remember that uh, it is not advisable to choose a pressing force above P10. So uh, uh, P11 is not uh, as necessary, but though we know they are the stationary point, but it's good we have the expression for it. When you are carrying out your design, you can decide to do a check uh, to know which is greater so that it can guide you on the cable zone to choose. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, this, I'm going to split up this graph and make it very simpler. I'm going to have equation 9D and equation 8D. I will pick only uh, equation 6D on one graph. While I'm going to have, I repeat the same thing, but this time I'll pick equation uh, uh, 7D on a particular graph so that we can check this condition of 6D greater than this or 7D uh, lesser than uh, 60, whichever is the case. So those conditions will guide us as to what equation to use because if we see the solution to be somewhere here, we we'll have the solution to be somewhere here. All right. So if we do that, you are going to have here. Uh, if you solve that, you are going to have here to be P10. All right. Y here will remain here becomes P12. Okay. So that is what we are going to see. But uh, instead of doing it, we can decide to separate this graph so that. But we can look for P10. We can look for our P12 because we already know what P10 is. I use the symbol P10 because when you solve for this at the intersection point of the equation 7D and equation 8D, which is this point, if you solve for it, you will have an expression that is similar to when you solve for equation 6D and equation 9D. You will have the same expression. So that is why I call here P10. But here you are going to have a different expression when you solve for that. All right? So... I'm going to draw the summary graph so that you get it clearer. Maybe uh, I'll draw it so that you get it clearer. So, uh, But we need to obtain this equation uh, P12. All right? Well, the equation P12, that is a case where we have uh, uh, this one uh, uh, set at this point and then to produce equation P10, which we got when we did the reversal. All right? So let me just draw the graph so that we'll see it clearly of each of them uh, when 6d is lesser than 7d we are going to have a equation p10 and equation 11 and these are the respective uh, cable zone equation the upper and lower band limit of the cable zone so when you have a situation where you have 6d to be lesser than 7d all you need to do is to make use of this graph which is making use of equation 10 and uh, equation 11 as the economic press stressing force. Of course, like I said, you pick press stress force around the uh, low lesser than equation 10, which is more economical. So if you are picking a press stress force uh, below equation 10, it means you are using a cable zone uh, equation 2C and 3C for your cable zone. Similarly, when you have your press stress force choosing within this range, within this boundary, uh, you make use of equation 1C and 3C. Similarly, for this, you make use of this. So this is just how you pick your press stressing force and your operative uh, cable zone uh, equation. Similarly, for this, you do the same. Uh, when you have your, your 6D to become greater than this, uh, make use of equation uh, 12. Uh, equation 12, like I said, we are going to solve for it and obtain the expression for equation 12. Maybe you have to do that. 
and obtain the value for equation 12. Um, like there's a last condition where you have uh, both graph intersecting. When they intersect, we are going to have equation 2C and 3C as the cable zone equation and equation 1C and 3C as the cable zone equation. When you pick your first response uh, above X or above Y, but when you pick it below X, you choose uh, equation 2C and uh, 3C as your operative cable zone equation. All right. So this is the graphical expression of uh, the various conditions of uh, pre-stressing force. You can see this is the equation. Um, yeah, we we'll say equation C is D um, being uh, lesser. What it means that equation 7 D becomes greater. You can see the expression. Similarly, you can see the expression uh, when you have this. So all right. So uh, this brings us to a conclusion of this uh, topic. Um, on composite section. Uh, so with this, I believe we're able to determine uh, both uh, the desired pre-stress force and as well as the cable zone equation to use for your choosing pre-stress force. Uh, and um, we can go on and on and on. I think the last thing we uh, need to mention is uh, the cover requirements. All right, so the cover requirement is, um... We're having P12, P12 is equal to F maximum Z1, open bracket Z1 plus Z2, uh, close bracket MDB, open bracket 1 minus uh, Z1, Z2 prime, Z1 prime, Z2. And uh, we'll have the whole of the expression as this. Uh, the cover requirement for minimum press stress uh, force. Uh, the minimum press stress for maximum eccentricity, the formula is uh, we have P13, we we'll call it P13, that it be greater than this expression, and also we we'll have P14 to be greater than this, all right? So this uh, marks the end of uh, the lectures. If you, do, if you do find this lecture helpful, do where to subscribe. I'll see you in our next class. Stay well.